Good morning. I'd like to call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearings today's May 23rd, 2019 at Boston City Hall, room 801. First order of business, hearing minutes. At the request of the PIC staff, the acceptance of minutes of PIC hearing held May 19th, 2019. I'd like to hear a motion to accept minutes. Make a motion to accept the minutes. Hear a second. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion passes. First item of the agenda under public hearings. On a petition by Marbury Terrace Inc. for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjustment to Amory Street, Roxbury, located on its northwesterly side at address number 179 to 181, generally southwest of Marbury Terrace. New business on May 19th, as shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Eastman Plan 181 and 179 Amory Street, Boston, Prosperity District, one sheet dated April 5th, 2019. How are you, sir? I'm very good, thank you very much. If you could be ever so kind to introduce yourself and your staff members. Yes, I will. Thank I am Bob Baldwin uh, from QPD LLC, a development consultant for Community Servings and Marbury Terrace LLC. I have with me Ed Hirschfield, who's our legal counsel, and Zach Rick Richards, the civil engineer for the project. Uh, I'll give you a quick uh, a brief summary of what's going on and then uh, turn it over for any detailed questions. So um, uh, Community Servings is a nonprofit organization, been in, in this location in Jamaica Plain for probably about a little over 10 years now. They provide uh, free meals delivered to the homes of folks that are too ill to cook for themselves or get out and have been doing this for 20 plus years now. Um, this project, uh, the project that sort of drove this, is an expansion uh, of a building in addition and then renovating the existing commercial kitchen out there, which will allow them to really triple the amount of meals that they can deliver, uh, which is a, a, a wonderful service. During our uh, community process uh, leading up to this, one of the issues that came up was the sidewalk out there on Amory Street um, is, is generally narrow, but also had a pinch point uh, where this transformer for the streetlights uh, existed and the streetlight itself, such that it was about two feet wide, I believe. Um, and so the handicap accessibility was, was not existent, and it was really a problem, and it was forcing folks to go out onto the street. Uh, uh, really a community benefit commitment that uh, the community servings made during this process was to try to resolve this issue. Uh, during uh, discussions with uh, city agencies in the city, uh, we uh, investigated moving the transformer box, moving the traffic light. Uh, both of these uh, were, in essence, infeasible. Um, and the city asked us, could we resolve the issue really just by uh, bumping in on the community servings property and creating a wider sidewalk uh, walk around that way, which we gladly agreed to. So that's the background of this, and it will provide um, you know, the full handicap accessibility and, and solve a, an existing problem. Any other questions, I'm sure, can be answered uh, by our, my esteemed colleagues. Uh, since this is a public hearing and for public purposes, you need to show them. Members of the board, um, here's the overall site plan just to, to give an overall perspective. We have Marbury, Marbury Terrace over here and Amory Street. Uh, so we're focused on where we're providing the easement is along Amory Street here. Uh, this, this is the parking lot that's going to service the new addition. Uh, it's essentially a redevelopment of an existing parking lot there. Um, just to zoom in on the curb cut itself a little bit. Um, here's that curb cut on Amory. Um, here's the existing transformer and street light here. Um, and this is the bump out to provide four foot clear around the transformer. And then in doing so, we're also providing, um, you know, more of a traditional curb cut here and easement to provide that, that four foot clear for the pedestrian travel of that, uh, you know, full curb wheel height. And I believe you all have the easement plan 
but this is uh, the easement plan that was submitted uh, for a record showing the full easement along Hammering Street. So at this point, open it up for any questions. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Name your talk. Members of the public. All right. I'll entertain a motion on the side. Make a motion to approve the petition by Marbury Terrace Inc. for acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to Amory Street. As read in the record by the chair, as shown on this plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan 181 and 179 Amory Street, Boston, Roxbury District, one sheet dated April 5th, 2019. There. Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you. Thank you very, Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next item is on a petition by 232 Old Colony LP for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to the following public ways in South Boston. Old Colony Avenue on its northeasterly side at address number 232 between Gusson Street and Mitchell Street. And Mitchell Street on its northwestly side northeast of Old Colony Avenue. This was new business on uh, May 9th, 2019. And this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department. Engineering Division, Pedestrian Easement Plan, Old Colony Avenue, South Boston, Cottage Street, and one sheet dated April 23rd, 2019. All right, thank you, uh, members of the commission. Uh, Kevin Deaver of Rody Architects, uh, representing the, uh, the project. Um, we have uh, Kasha Grabowski and uh, Ryan Sillery uh, with the ownership uh, group. Um, and uh, we were, uh, as, as mentioned here uh, two weeks ago, um, sort of explained the, uh, um, the conditions that we're uh, working with right now. Um, this is a process of uh, granting an easement um, to widen the sidewalk. Um, and we've gone through the, the process of rectifying the situation, which um, uh, created uh, a couple of obstacles uh, within the, uh, within the eas easement. But, uh, the plan that we're presenting today and that we've been working on with uh, BPDA um, and PIC staff is to, uh, again, rectify this in, a, in the cleanest way possible. Can you walk us through the sure. details of the pedestrian easement? Uh, so the easement is really um, two areas, sort of about a five-foot strip that runs about 150 feet along uh, Old Colony uh, from Gustin Street uh, to Mitchell, um, and then another about uh, Two foot strip, or maybe foot and a half um, of additional uh, easement on, along Mitchell Street uh, to, to allow for a five foot sidewalk from the edge of the curb uh, to the edge of that easement. Um, so, since we were here uh, two weeks ago, we, we've added that uh, portion of the uh, easement into it. So, for the record, if you can tell us why you are giving us that easement. Um, this is um, a, uh, through the, the process of uh, design review with BPDA, um, there is a uh, future uh, initiative, a planning uh, approach to widening Old Colony for the incorporation of uh, bike lanes. Um, the uh, tree pits that we've uh, located on this plan um, also kind of comply and, and sort of conform to that, that future plan. Um, and uh, the additional uh, width there will allow for that, that bike lane to uh, maintain a pedestrian right away in the future. Thank you. And uh, obviously this was some conversation at New Business. We appreciate you being here. Yeah, um, thank you for having me. This, is, this action is coming, as you said, to rectify something which should not have occurred in the first place. Can you just walk us through how we ended up in this place? Sure. Yep. Um, the, the project um, was permitted and approved um, and with, uh, you know, uh, in a process, uh, again, uh, with the community, uh, with the BPDA, um, the, there was a, I think, kind of a, a misunderstanding uh, regarding the, the way that we were requested to set our building back at the ground floor. Um, we felt like that was the, the portion of the, the, the request that we were complying with. and. Uh, the uh, sort of act of, of granting the easement um, was um, something that we sort of discovered a little late in the process. So we should have been to PIC a lot sooner in the process. We understand that. Um, 
but the uh, the intent um, has has, been, has always been to comply with the uh, the, the planning initiative uh, on Old Colony. Um, and just to make sure, are you now clear? And this is for actually every member of the project team. Are you now clear about the role that the PIC plays in the sort of the rights, responsibilities, and access to public space? Yes. Yes. Right. And, and can you just walk through that each member of the planning team, each member of the development team, just? Uh, I'm Ryan Sillery, City Point Capital owner. It's Kasia Grabowski, um, City Point Capital. And we actually have general contractor Michael Salmon that's been working closely with ISD. <coughs> Santini is part of our engineering team. And Chris Miola, a partner in City Point Capital. Follow up point for clarification for the Chief's thoughts. So you are giving us a pedestrian easement on the street. If I go on a vertical plane, is there going to be an overhangs from your buildings above? Yes, it already is. And at what height? Um, uh, 10 feet. Um, and how yeah. is that thing codified, Amy? Because, this, because they're... They can overhang it. The, the setback is just at sidewalk level. Yes, but if, for argumentative purposes, if their overhang is it's 5 feet above... It's pedestrian easement. easement. surface easement. No, it's yes, but we need to guard the height to ensure yeah, that... The minimum, so, so how do we ensure that they will manage that 10-foot minimum? Is it through the building department? No, or the building department. No. This and it's, is, I think it's okay. over 10 so feet. You, you've managed it so that it doesn't become a point of awkwardness for us. I, I do think that point. Like, again, this is the, the sequence that should have that should have occurred is that that is the conversation should happen before the building got built. Right. Is that a, a, your 100%. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, and correct me wrong, this is not the only active construction project, construction project you've got going on in the, in the city? It is not, okay. no. Right. And I think there's a, a set of things associated with the PIC. It's not just about sort of coming here, but actually making sure that we have plans at the, at the request that Amy and Todd put in that are responded to on a timely basis so we can actually manage the, uh, who has access and uh, rights in the, in the public right of way. I know that they have repeatedly reached out to you requesting things associated with another project, I believe twice in December, once as soon as uh, this, or recently as this past and week. that is, what, 6 West Broadway? Uh, I think we're missing two documents there. We actually talked to Lou right before the meeting, um, and we're going to get those over to you guys shortly. The hotel is not, um, to be honest with you, we still don't have gas in the building. The building is 99% done, and we're not gonna, we don't have gas yet from the gas strike. So we don't anticipate at the earliest middle of July. But I can assure you we'll comply and everything on those documents as we discussed prior to. I appreciate that. I mean, Kramer, I, the, the, you've been requesting since December. Yeah, I mean, if you don't need to occupy or have gas, you can just give us the documents. Yeah, we'll from our standpoint, and then we can And I think we are, like, 99% there, right? Well, other than the missing documents. Yeah, the two that we discussed prior to the meeting. Right, and that's both the legal and the mylars, right? Yeah, Correct. so it's, yeah, it's one copy of the mylar plans um, that we'll be seeing, and three sets of legal documents. There's so highway easement, pedestrian easement, and a specific repairs, maintenance agreement. Which we just discussed. Yep. Got it. We'll get those over to you. When will you expect to have those in? Sorry. Um, I think Lou is on vacation next week, so we're going to try to gather all that and get that to you uh, when he comes back the following okay. week. But the Mylar's can come sooner. Mylar will take it. Yeah. We can get to you the Mylar this week. Yes, sir. Yeah. Great. Okay. Right. Uh, other questions either on the process that led us here or the pedestrian easement itself? Yeah, Mayor Todd. All right. Members of the public? I'll entertain a motion on the pedestrian easement plan. I make a motion on approval of the petition by 232 Old County LP for the acceptance of pedestrian easement adjacent to the following public ways in South Boston, read into the record by the chair, and I've shown on the plan entitled City of Boston, Public Works Department, Engineering Division, pedestrian easement plan, Old Colony Avenue, South Boston, Cottage Street, one sheet dated April 23rd, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank you very much. One more item. Oh, okay. sorry. I'm sorry, it's specific. Uh, our next item is on a joint petition by 232 Old Colony LP and 218 220 Old Colony Avenue LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in South Boston, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk, roadway, and pedestrian ramp reconstruction, as well as new and relocated street trees, street lighting infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, driveway curb cuts, and a tabled roadway. 
Locations are Old Colony Avenue on its northeasterly side at address number 232 between Gustin Street and Mitchell Street. Gustin Street, northeast of Old Colony Avenue, and Mitchell Street on its northwestly side, northeast of Old Colony Avenue. This was new business uh, on May 9th, 2019, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Specific Repairs Plan, 232 Old Colony Avenue, a public way in Boston, four sheets, dated May 2019. All right, again, um, thank you uh, for your time on this. Um, through the, the process of um, reviewing the um, easement, um, on Old Colony, uh, it became clear that um, some additional work on uh, Gustin Street uh, would be required, requiring uh, some grading work, um, specifically to address uh, the conditions of uh, accessibility uh, around the, uh, the transition from Old Colony to Gustin um, with uh, curb cuts, uh, or not curb cuts, but handicap ramps. Um, and passage uh, over Guston um, and through working with the BPDA, uh, PIC, um, Accessibilities uh, Board, uh, we have uh, come up with this plan to uh, table um, Guston uh, from a, um, right at Old Colony um, back towards um, the uh, intersection. There's sort of an uh, intersection of uh, Guston and Guston. Uh, so this, this tabling would occur here, uh, allowing for much uh, easier, uh, especially uh, um, you know, accessibility uh, of that sidewalk. Uh, there is an elderly uh, VHA housing complex in the back here. Um, so the, uh, the thought of, um, again, dealing with some of the, the tricky grading here, uh, this approach uh, really makes very little impact on drainage patterns. Um, and since we were here two weeks ago, we've uh, worked with uh, Water Sewer Commission to uh, extend one drainage catch basin, um, which we um, you know, found approval on that. Um, and uh, uh, today is just the sort of culmination of that. So the, the, the location which you are tabling is it a private street, public street? Public. public street. Who is going to certify that the work has been done to our standards? Uh, Who will certify that the work will be done? Rick, is it your team or is it someone else? Because yeah. it is not you who have stamped the plans. No, Rick, Rick Latini with Howard Stein Hudson. Just so you know, we were brought into this process a little bit late, but uh, we're working with, uh, we've worked with Kevin quite a bit in the past and Ryan, and we know your standards. Todd's actually just emailed it to me recently for another project, so, we, so I will make sure the details in there so, meet sir, the city standards. The gentleman who is speaking mm -hmm. on your behalf needs to certify to the city of Boston that the construction work that is to be done by your contractor, which may not have oversight, which may not, we might, we may not have oversight, but it is still your responsibility to certify to the city that the work set, work that is being petitioned here has been done to city standards. Okay. Yes. One, uh, yes. And I, I believe Thank our you. specific repairs plan um, have been stamped, um, and that will oversight will continue. Uh, Not meaning team. to labor the point, but the previous comments that she, the chair mentioned mm -hmm. about doing work before you get permissions, we act as one unified commission. Our commission does include the inspection services department, which houses the buildings department. And in prior years, sometimes we motivate people to slow things down, including shutting your projects until everyone gets in the same, same sheet music. Mm -hmm. Okay? Understood. Thank you. Oh, understood. Other questions or comments on this plan? No, I actually think that with Howard Sign Hudson, they've got a new business action that's essentially tabling another stub of Athens Street in a very similar fashion, so I feel like we can take this opportunity to kind of standardize how we would approach that, because as we march down Old Colony, we're going to find these little streets all along the way. So from a pedestrian experience, Amy, it will be Yeah, it'd be nice to standardize how we take little streets yeah. that aren't wide enough for two-way traffic. Yeah. I mean, again, in line with that, as you know, the I think the solution is one which does improve accessibility, yeah. makes it more pedestrian friendly. It is the process which has been uh, the troubling part of, of this picture. Uh, yep. Uh, action. Okay. Okay. Other questions or comments? No. Name your Todd. Members of the public.
Okay. Um, I will entertain a motion on this item, and again, I uh, do want to remind all members of the project team uh, the importance of, uh, of understanding the role of the PIC, working with Amy and Todd on having actions go through the PIC, and also making sure that we are responding in a timely manner to all of their requests, whether it's for the mylars, for the documents. Um, having things outstanding for months is, uh, is, uh, is in nobody's benefit. So yeah. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I'll make a motion to approve the joint petition by 232, Old Colony LP, and 218-220, Old Colony <laughs> Ave LLC the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in South Boston, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk, roadway, and pedestrian ramp re reconstruction, as well as new and relocated street trees, street lighting, infrastructure, storm drain infrastructure, driveway curb cuts, and, and a tabled roadway, as read into the record by the chair, and as shown on the set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division Specific Repairs Plan, 232 Old Colony Ave, Public Way, Boston, four sheets dated May 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our next item is on a petition by Fox and Knife LLC for the granting of a sidewalk cafe license for seasonal outdoor seating uh, within West Broadway, South Boston, located on its northeasterly side at address number 28, generally southeast of Dorchester Avenue, and consisting of seating for 14 persons and approximately 160 square feet within the public way. This was new business on May 9th, 2019, and it says shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division License Plan Sidewalk Cafe, 28 West Broadway, South Boston, one sheet dated May 9th, 2019. Good morning, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller. With me to my right is Karen Akunowitz from Fox and Knife LLC and the chef, owner, and operator of Fox and the Knife Restaurant at 28 West Broadway. And to my left is Lisa Chow from VHB, who's the uh, civil engineer on the project. Um, we were here two weeks ago, so I don't need to go into as many details. Uh, however, um, this is a recently uh, open restaurant um, from Karen, her first restaurant in the city uh, that she owns and operates. Um, it's the site of the former uh, Maiden restaurant, which is right across from the MBTA uh, station in South Boston. Um, again, at 28 West Broadway. And the restaurant is about 1,500 square feet on the first floor, 1,500 square feet in the basement for storage as well as bathrooms, uh, prep kitchen and office space. Um, she's proposing, and the reason why we're here today is she is proposing the addition of a small seasonal outdoor patio on public property uh, located directly in front of and adjacent to the site. It's approximately 160 square feet uh, and it uh, would uh, provide seating for 14 folks to uh, provide an additional amenity for her customers to sit outside uh, as the weather gets warmer and enjoy um, her Italian food. Um, it's similar to what's, uh, what's there uh, next door at Warden Hall, um, right next door and adjacent to this property, so uh, it would fit in uh, with, with what's there now. Um, it wouldn't uh, extend or be any bigger than what um, is existing on the sidewalk to date. Um, with that being said, I'll let Lisa go over more details and the specifics, and uh, we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Lisa Chow with VHB. I'd like to provide an overview of what was presented um, at the new business hearing two weeks ago. As Nick uh, mentioned, the Fox and the Knife restaurant is requesting the approval of a sidewalk cafe at 28 West Broadway Street. The cafe is approximately uh, 160 square feet for 14 patrons. The existing sidewalk width is approximately 14.8 feet, and the proposed sidewalk cafe width is approximately 7.4 feet. The cafe will be separated by a barrier that would consist of a post anchored to a steel plate and then bolted to um, the existing concrete sidewalk. A pedestrian level of service analysis was completed and it indicated that there would be no change in the pedestrian level of service once the cafe is in place. Um, the existing sidewalk operates at a level of service A and will continue to operate at a level of service A once the cafe is in place. Um, as Nick indicated, the proposed um, cafe for the Fox and the Knife restaurant is consistent with the cafe at Warden Hall, which was recently approved and two stores down from the Fox and the Knife restaurant. Are there any questions? No, uh, I mean this. Uh, obviously, we talked about it in new business, and as you just said, it replicates what's right next to it. Um, I think we are all intrigued by the uh, sort of uh, 
seating that faces the street, um, which is a, a nice touch. <laughs> nice to that. No, it's very nice. Whoever, may I ask who came up with that? I'm just yeah, curious. So I work with um, Jessica Haley from Rhodey Architects, um, and she is the one that I worked with to uh, redesign the inside of the restaurant. Yeah, she's awesome. wonderful. Thank you. It gives us more options, Amy, for narrow. Especially for tiny cafes. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So really thank, you, oh, thank you, ma'am, for what you Oh, thank you. Yeah, she's great. You raised the bar. <laughs> We're trying. <laughs> like the, the two things that I would just want to make sure is that just again, just sort of watch that height of the garage, just make sure where things aren't tipping back out into the uh, sidewalk. Which I know we, we've talked about before. And then, if I'm reading this correctly, the uh, location of sort of the wheelchair accessible seating is sort of all the way at the end of the aisle. Um, I would just, yeah, I think it may make. I would talk with our commission you need person. To this Can I just plant? Sorry, exactly. just put it. Because otherwise it's just not fair if I if I am in that situation. To have to get exactly yeah. okay. that makes sense. Uh, we'll we'll talk to the architect and look at that. In place of our strongest decide to switch it around. Yeah. Just show that the entire cafe is accessible. Yeah. Right. I mean, you just remove the seating. It's exactly. All right. Other questions or comments? Any other talk? Members of the public. All right. We we'll entertain a motion on the side. I'm glad to make a motion to approve the petition by no. Cambridge, uh, by Fox and Knife, LLC. We have to go to the, to go to the licensing board. For the Brennan Sidewalk Cafe they license, wouldn't hear us season until we outdoor here, seating, so we're going to within West fast. Broadway, South Boston, located on its northeasterly side at address number 28, generally southeast of Dorchester Avenue, and consisting of seating for 14 persons and approximately 160 feet square feet uh, within the public way, as shown in the uh, Plan inside the City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, License Plan, Sidewalk Cafe, 28 West Broadway, South Boston, one sheet dated May 9th, 2019. Second. All in favor? Aye. So moved. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Our next item is on a petition by Cambridge Network Solutions for a grant of location with lead company status and two participants to install new telecommunication conduit with City Shadow within Summer Street, Boston proper, from address number one, generally at Holly Street to Devonshire Street. This was new business on May 9th, 2019, and this has shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division, grant of location plan, one Summer Street, Boston, five sheets aid, May 13th, 2019. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Um, hi, Shelley Cullen, um, representing Cambridge Network Solutions. And Jeffrey Harrington from Cambridge Network Solutions. So actually, we did not get the notification in, in time for the Boston Globe, so we have to ask for a postponement until June 6th. But what I'd like to do is address any, any issues that are outstanding now, because we're really um, kind of under the gun, because we need to get this in um, before repaving. Uh, I, I apologize for not being here. The new business 80 parts of Summer Street, which is part of the closed pedestrian mall. Are they chopping that part up? and to the condition of Summer Street. Since this is not a micro pain, I'm so concerned about, I'm so concerned, sir, ma'am, about the disruption of our street. This is a, this is a pedestrian area, okay? Yes. And when you all joyfully cut up our streets, the end product is not to my liking. So with participants, we're in a full range. Full range? But Amy, are, are we cutting into the brick area? Into Summer the brick area? No. no. 100% right. Okay. No, and also not joyfully. I <laughs> um, we are adding two um, additional conduits for City Shadow, and we, um, I have been in contact with Anita Lorichello um, at Downtown Business Improvement District. So she said she would coordinate with us for any notifications or anything else we need, and also suggested that we uh, coordinate with uh, one Winthrop Square construction. So we're absolutely on board with that, and we'll take care of that. Who, whoever your contractor that is doing the backfilling, okay, make sure that they do it correctly because it is becoming an embarrassment as to the quality of the work that you all, not you, others are doing for streets that the city might come and pay a couple of years later and then for a couple of seasons or years we have the worst trench repairs. Not trench repairs, the trench, it, it's settling, okay? So here there's a lot of pedestrian traffic more than the cars. There are pedestrians mm -hmm. who walk on the street, legally or illegally, and we don't want tripping hazards. Even quarter inches make it very difficult for us. 
No, and absolutely, and I will tell you that because the street is going to be repaved, and I know that area is very, I mean, all the areas of the city are important, but specifically this area is, has a lot of attention to it. We will make sure um, part of our vetting process is, if it helps, we did not go with the cheapest contractor, which is different. We went with someone that is used to working in the city of Boston and has a better reputation uh, than other people that were on the bid process. Who is that? I'm sorry? Who is that? It's Rosetti Construction. I think they've been doing a lot more work in that in this area. So uh, one thing just to take a look at, and we may have discussed this in your business, it looks like there are sort of two points of access, one near Chauncey and one near Otis Street, both of which have where the iron is actually in the street bed. I don't know if the width, there may be the width in the furnishing zone in the on the sidewalk to be able to think about moving those handholds into the sidewalk and out of the road bed. But Especially if you, on Otis, it's just bus after bus. Right, coming right on through. Right, which will then that will just collapse your uh, uh, that casting. So if we, can, if we can, it looks like they're both just set right off the curb. Right, so the one on the left looks like it's so just one here. Yeah, that can be exactly shifted a little bit further, just and see whether we have. To Par's point, we don't want to uh, reduce the pedestrian experience, but if that can be essentially just just uh, uh, on the building side of the curb. That would be a preferable place to, uh, to look at that. Oh, you got that yep, absolutely. And then the same thing up by Otis, which. Here at Otis? Yeah. And it will depend. On, we don't want to take away from sort of the pedestrian path of travel, but there may be some real it's estate there so. in the furnishing zone that you can use. The, yeah. No, I understand. So, okay, so try to get it into the yeah. sound. Get, get, it, get it into a place where if I accidentally should walk and trip, I'm not going to come after you. Also, be mindful of the hollow sidewalks that we also have this area with. That may, that may be part of the challenge, yeah. but... Uh, yeah, um, I think on summary you should be okay. Otis is a little tricky. Um, on the, the non-bus side, that's all hollow. Um, so yeah, if you stay on summer, I think you've got no areaways, but when you're on Otis, those are hollow sidewalks out there. We can, we'll walk it before we come back so to the meeting. So if you do that, I think if your feet walk the area, you will know where yeah, no, that's fine. We'll walk. What I'll do is we'll walk one night when we can actually see everything Thank you and so just come up with a better plan when we come back. Yes. So okay. at least it's okay. Maybe then we, they just send the amendment plan so we can. Yeah, well, they're coming back for another public hearing. They're continuing today. Oh, Correct. That's, so, that's why I was thinking for next week we can have the no, updated plan. And thank you. But yeah, that's why we just wanted to see whatever other concerns you have. So when we do come back for the public hearing, hopefully we'll be good to go. Awesome. Other questions or comments? Okay. Maybe our time? I do. Thank you. Members of the public? All right. Uh, I'll uh, entertain a motion to continue this item until June 6th. Thank you very much. Take a motion. We can stay right here. this uh, item number, public hearing number five, to uh, June 6th. June 6th. Second. All in favor? All right. So Thank you so much. Moving on to new business. Our first item of new business is 200 Clarendon Street, St. James uh, Avenue, Boston Proper, a grant of location on a petition by Cambridge Network Solutions. Again, Shelley Cullen and Jeff, Jeff Harrington. Harrington. And Tim Cortell with Comcast. So we did and put this up. Oh, go ahead. Second. The reason you are here is because you are. Uh, He's a participant. <laughs> So we did put this out to the participant list and we ended up with two participants, Level 3 and Comcast. And we revised the plans to include their, some additional needs that they had. And uh, this is the final drawing. I'm going to get um, Todd those plans, copies of these plans. But before we redo it, I wanted to make sure um, there wasn't any, anything in addition to that that you wanted. It's about 620 feet going from an existing manhole on St. James, which was the first light lead company project. So we're going into that manhole, coming down to the corner of uh, Clarendon, and then turning down and then going to, into 200 Clarendon and to Stewart Street. Amy, in the in years past, have we asked the petition? petitioners to bring us photographs of how the location looks today not when they did the plans. No, it's really whether or not they trigger a guaranteed street is the, is the capture of You know other right, guaranteed streets. Yeah. One size fits all. We do it for five years. We spend ten million dollars so right. it's five years. Well we are I getting spend. one trench here instead of three, which would be our oh. typical situation. <laughs> 
And we did um, speak with the Disability Commission and assured them that we will make sure that the pedestrian pathways um, crossing the, the roads are will not have manholes. So that's St. James and Clarendon is yes. not going to be in a crosswalk? Um, this one here, um, we actually have to move this, this handhold over a little bit. Okay. So, so we will take care of that. Right, just right to that point. Yeah, but first we actually just added this for Comcast. Um, so when we had initially done it, we didn't know who the participants would be. You're blaming Tim. I'm blaming Tim because he's here to defend himself. <laughs> but no, and, and we also added City uh, City Shadow to to his additional manholes in that location. So you know we will work with the Disability Commission and make sure they're comfortable with where our uh, handhole manhole covers are. And try to and, and just to follow up on that, which I think is important, is to try to aid in the communication of that. We brought the vendor in on the emails direct, so that's not sort of from Shelley to me to the form and to the person out and it sort of gets watered down. We brought them in and we provided that contact. So Phoenix, who's proposed to do the work on this one, has been direct in touch with the people from the disability. So they get it. Right. There's, there's no way for them to even turn around and say they didn't know they've been brought into the loop at the beginning, which I think is a little bit different than sort of traditional where they get it at the end and it's on a map and no one really looks at it, the detail. My guess is thinking of the, the previous uh, public hearing item, maybe harder to do this, but looking at the longer run at Clarendon and Stewart, where the manhole is basically going to be in the center of the roadway, whether there's any adjustment that can be made there. I don't know that's, uh, I'm not sure what we do that. That is, that's the one challenge. One challenge. 39 bucks. Yeah, and there's, a lot of, there's at least a heavy bus route that currently goes through this. There was some response back from the MBTA, I believe, that we have to make sure if the bus route is impeded, right. it has to be relocated. The other issue that, just to bring up, that we run into is sort of different from the previous position. We're sort of, we're not stuck at a start point. Well, we sort of are with one summer, but it's a bigger footprint of where we can start from. Here that right. joint trench, we're starting from a point, and it actually is a decent running line because they were able to find this path in that roadway coming down on the original trench that was done a year ago, it, it makes the most sense from a running line perspective. And from a traffic flow, um, we're able to, because that's a three-lane street going sort of in one direction, we'll try to minimize the disruption because we should be able to keep two lanes open plus the delivery entrances because it's a heavy delivery spot too and still work on sort of the um, east, the west side, I guess, if you're looking down um, St. James. So I feel, I feel compelled to say this thing every couple of years or so. You still understand, John, correct me if I'm saying this thing incorrectly. You are getting a grant of location. If for some reason your assets need to be adjusted to city purposes, you will need to adjust your assets at your expense. That's correct. Yes. Okay. Please understand that. The reason I'm saying that is as much as when the city is trying to integrate dedicated bicycle lanes throughout the area, we may find the locations where we want to put dedicated bicycle lanes muddled with your manhole covers. Cycles, tires, and slick surfaces may not go well. So we, we want to pro provide a balanced mode of transportation. So if it ever comes to that, it will be for the city's needs, and you will have to adjust. Okay. Yes, sir. I assume that's in the master lead company yes, agreement. I just, it is in the paperwork. I forget to read the paperwork. That's why I'm saying this to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Other questions or comments? Any other time? Members and comments? Does June 6th, 6th work as well? You got this? Yes, please. All right, we'll see you on, in two weeks on. Great, thank you. Thanks thank so you much. very much. Our final item of new business is uh, 69A Street, Athens Street, South Boston, specific repairs, projection license on a set of petitions by the Council on International Education Exchange. Good morning again, Mr. Chair, members of the Commission, Attorney Nick Zazula, McDermott, Quilty, and Miller. Uh, with me to my left is Mariella Abreu from DBI, who's the owner's representative, 
To my far left is uh, Rick Latini from Howard Stein Hudson. Uh, we also have Nate Turner from uh, Margulies, Margulies Peruzzi Architects and other members of the, of the team who are uh, here to help answer any questions you might have. Um, just to give a quick background on this, um, C, uh, the, the property owner and petitioner here is CIEE. -E. And With, so who is, the, who is here representing the property owner? Uh, Mariella is here representing. Sure. No, that's a, she's uh, the owner's representative. So CIEE -E is the Council on International Educational Exchange. It's a domestic nonprofit, and it's actually the country's oldest non-governmental uh, organization in the field of international education and study abroad programming. Um, they've been around since 1947, so for a long time. And uh, as part of this project at 69A Street in um, South Boston, they are proposing to move uh, their main office from Maine to Boston. They're currently in Portland, uh, and also consolidate their Boston offices that are here currently. Um, so um, they would be bringing new jobs and new life to uh, what uh, historically was a, uh, it's a brick and beam building. It was formerly utilized as a rivet factory by the Standard River, uh, the Standard Rivet Company. Um, so it would be re reutilizing an old uh, and long vacant warehouse space uh, in an area that uh, frankly could use office uses and not so much residential and uh, condo, which, is, which they've seen an influx in this neighborhood. So the project was actually very well received by the neighborhood. Um, at this point where we are today is we are uh, building permit eligible, we're building permit ready. Uh, it was an Article 80 small project review project with the BPDA. Um, we received um, approvals back in 2016, and uh, after CIEE -E purchased the project and the property, um, we've since gone back to the, to the BPDA and the zoning board to make changes to the project. The project actually has become smaller from what was originally proposed. Um, so that's where we are at this point in time. It's a fully approved project from, from that perspective, um, and we are here today to work on uh, specific repairs to Athens Street, which is uh, a narrow street that will provide parking access to the rear of their building for uh, employee surface parking. Um, with that being said, I can throw it over to Rick and Mary Ella jump in if, you, if I missed anything, but Rick can go over the plans and answer any questions you may have. Go ahead, Rick, sorry. <laughs> just so you know what the site is about. It's a couple blocks southeast of Broadway Station. It's right behind him, right in Nestle, which is right here. So you can see we have frontage on A Street to the west, Athens to the north, and the south block bypass road to the east. Uh, 18,000 square foot lot. And as Nick mentioned, there's a couple of existing buildings. We're demolishing the one square brick that has an attached warehouse building to it to uh, create a small 18 parking spot service piece of parking lots in our building. This is a three story brick which we are renovating and expanding by adding two floors. Will give us about 47,000 square feet of office space. Um, so we are tabling Athens Street as uh, we mentioned on an earlier project. We'll work with the details with Amy and Todd. Uh, the way we're tabling it would be to have a, a city standard driveway kind of on A Street so that we, we have a flush sidewalk condition as you're walking down A Street. We would be uh, bringing the A Street up to the curb level so we're going to maintain the, the northerly. Senate Concrete Sidewalk, which was a comment from BPDA, BPDA earlier in the process. On our side, we're building a four-foot wide cement concrete sidewalk. It will all be flush, so we have a couple driveway openings, two 24-foot ones, that will all be flush. The only place we have a raised uh, curb is that we have a low spot here with a couple drains, and so to get a standard uh, boss so a curb inlet in, we're going to have a reveal only in those spots. Um, Creek, where are the street lights? Excuse me? Where are the street lights? There, I believe there are no street lights anymore. I believe this part is to put them on the building, and that would be part of our second option, too. But is uh, Mr. Yetman's team okay with it? Yeah, so, I mean, we can, we'll verify, but the, the I think the answer for this is building mounted lights so that we're not further encroaching on what is a very tight right way. Uh, That's correct. We just need to make sure that we have the proper easements to attach our assets to your buildings. Get from Sri Lanka okay. The so please ensure that as a public street, sure. because now you are tabling it. Okay. So there's uh, it's good in one way for pedestrians, and then there's a false sense of expectations of how one can traverse over there. So lighting is important. We just want to make sure that the lights that are attached to your buildings wired through our assets properly function. So if there's a bulb that is 
not working, it doesn't become one of the headaches for us. Okay. okay. So we appreciate you allowing us to attach the lights to your buildings, but it still needs to make sure that Mr. Yeah, Edmund can manage it. Yeah, and has requirements about how those attachments need to work and that they are on the outside of the building, so we'll... Yeah. Okay. So you are looking up, sorry, you are looking after the whole drainage issue, how storm water will flow, you've done the paths to make sure that we don't create Yes, actually, that's what we actually went through uh, quite a couple of rounds of last one sewer to okay. flood the drainage. We have their actual time cycle. Oh, yeah. I missed it. Roughly how many employees will be in the building? That's right. And that's for me. I'm sorry? How many employees? Um, about 200. About 200? Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's right. I meant to mention there is, there's, there's no transportation access plan on this because it's a small project fee, but I was told the construction management plan was submitted to BTD, so I don't know if that's made to you or not. Yeah, you. Just to clarify, A Street uh, sidewalks, they're going to remain the same, right? Correct. We're going to be in front of our building if we disturb it. They're not going to be flush. Like no, no, no. no, 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 no just, just want to make sure. But the building frontage is from Athens, right? Yes. Building. Your the 200 guests that are working at your place will come from Athens? No. Okay. No. They will come from A Street along Athens. So the people who work there will drive down this sub of Athens to reach the parking lot, but then they can go into the building from the parking lot. The main entrance will be from Ace, we'll Office. front on A Street, yes. Correct. And there's also gonna be a, an accessible lift in the back of the building for those uh, you know, persons with disabilities to just access the, um, the building through that uh, point as well. Can the park, I'm sorry, I did. Is the parking lot accessible through your building from the back door? Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. So folks would not, once they park in the rear, they would not have to walk all the way back around to the front. They can go through the parking lot, which would help with the, the issue of the narrow streets and the sidewalks. We don't yep. envision pets being here, but we want a space for them. Who is on the other side of, uh, of Athens? Who is the about a brand new residential? So on, on the other side of Athens Street, there's a three-unit there's a three unit condominium building, which we are in touch with um, in terms of these changes and from our recent correspondence with them, which Todd has been a part of. Um, they seem amenable to this plan that's being presented today. So they are okay with that? We are yeah. not, we're not impacting the there. sidewalk that they constructed along their side. We're just bringing the road up to the sidewalk that they built in conjunction Correct. with their project. Would we, I'll pass this over for you. I think, I think it makes sense, but would we typically ask for the letter to, sign, to provide a letter? Well, so, I mean, they, they have, they we do have correspondence from them. It's not been formalized, but they have yeah. commented and told us what was constructed from their project and right. we're not, impact this project it. will not impact that. We're coming up to the curb line that they constructed right where they left off. It's just gonna be accurate. So even from the street lights, as the chief's mentioning, all we need is a letter saying they are, they acknowledge these we'll plans. We'll get street lighting saying that no, they- From the fellow opposite the side. Right, they already okay. have lights on their building. That are already yeah. in effect. So right. basically we're replicating, you're right. replicating on the other side. So we're gonna start with that lighting and figure out if there needs to be additional lighting on the opposite side of what's the pretty narrow street. But I do think it's important to get a letter from them because yes. they do have access to their building. They do. From yes, the yeah, they have a they store do. out there that's a, like an emergency egress and that's all gonna remain exactly as they've left it, so. Correct, yeah. and, and we're, we, they, have a, they have a letter. We're just yeah. waiting for the trustee of the condo to sign it. Um, we've gotten feedback, I have it right here. We've gotten email feedback, which Todd was on, and basically showing them this plan um, to, to do what um, BTD just said, basically, uh, as well, to make sure that we're not impacting the garage access, egress, et cetera. So we are is, in touch with them. Is the business down at the, the, the very end of Athens Street? There used to be a business on the right hand. Is that gone or is that remaining? That's part of this. That's where the parking the will be. Yes. yes, sir. Yep. So that will be Perfect. gone. Yep. Okay. That building has been demolished and, and we'll have the surface parking. Yep. <laughs> one, one last street lighting question, which is probably maybe more for Amy than it is for you guys. guys uh, it, this has come up recently where street lights that were, or lights that were put in uh, not by the city, sort of had burnt out. What is our process for ensuring sort of notification? This is not about. Uh, so if if we will allow for building mounted lights, we like the connection to be external to the building, so yeah. it's essentially something that we can continue it to need be that, independently. Um, so the building gives the permission for street lighting to attach, but everything that's from that point on essentially functions like a city light. Got it. 
So if there's an outage and it gets re it gets reported, we can actually yeah, then so respond. that's why they would need to work with street lighting to make sure that what they're putting up is a standard that's compatible with the bulb well, that, that they can come out and replace it. Perfect. Great. Right. Other questions or comments? Yeah. Uh, quickly go to the rejection license. Yes. Uh, just for these wall-mounted lights that uh, the building is on the property lines and they're extending over the public way by about a foot. It's about over 10 and a half feet clear. And there's five of them and all told the License for Ashburn is a little bit over six square feet. So, so the license is for the lights? Yes, the of course, lights. yes. Okay. Yep. So it has been addressed. Yep. <laughs> so uh, what's going to happen with this project is street lighting is going to figure out if the lights that came um, from the adjacent project are enough for our needs, and if these, then these can be private lights. If street lighting wants additional lighting to be part of our street lighting system, then these lights will become part of the street lighting system. That's the question that we need to ask the street lighting. Great. Other questions? Is this just a pair of the production license? Okay. Any other Members of the public? All right. Uh, see you guys back on June 6th? Yes. Sounds good. Thank you, you very much. Time. Thank you for your time. Until then. All right. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Okay. All in favor? All right. So moved. <laughs>